Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. I'm sorry to say that the weather today doesn't look very nice. I've just looked out the window and it looks like something from the book Wuthering Heights. The wind's very strong, the rain is coming down from the heavens, (laughs) and uh, it's very dark. So not a good morning to be in the UK, and our clocks change next week by one hour, and I'll tell you more about that in future podcasts. Today, we want to talk about accent reduction and how to speak like a native. There's a few points I want to go over here. Uh, The first one is going to sound a little bit superficial, all right? And that is simply copy somebody else. If you want to speak like a native, copy somebody. Find a voice that you love. And that could be a TV presenter. Many people like the voice of Chris Tarrant. He's one of our popular TV personalities and radio presenters. I think a few students have told me that they really like the sound of his voice, Chris Tarrant. He used to present Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, which was one of these global syndicated programs. There probably was a version in your country too. Many people have told me that his voice is very clear and uh, is a very nice voice, very masculine. And for women, uh, you have many options. But Rebecca Jones from the BBC is one. Uh, Another one might be somebody like Anne Robinson. But my point is this. If you really are hung up on your accent and you really do want to change it, listening to how somebody else speaks, of course, is a wonderful thing to practice with. I've mentioned shadowing many times before. That's when you listen to a voice and you repeat it and imitate it. So, If you like the voice of Chris Tarrant or Anne Robinson or Rebecca Jones, these are perfect people to be practicing with, especially Chris Tarrant. He seems to have that balance just right of softness, but yet very strong. Um, Shadowing with these people is very powerful. Copying them, noting where they make sounds, what they stress, what they don't stress, where they breathe, where they don't breathe, their mannerisms. Uh, There's nothing wrong with copying them. It's what we all do. It's how we affirm each other. In fact, the TV show Friends is noted for changing communication skills in the UK because um, suddenly people started making actions the same as they did in Friends. And uh, this was quite something, because it showed just how powerful American media is on us. Moving on from that, uh, the mouth position, of course, is very important. You should be speaking vertically by pulling your mouth down. If you speak horizontally like these, I know you can't see me, but if you pull your mouth from side to side, uh, that's basically horizontal speaking. But you want to try to keep your upper lip stiff and pull down your voice, pull down the bottom lip. So if you watch any British speaker on TV or YouTube, you'll notice that they don't pull their mouth to the side Uh, the words are always made by pulling the mouth down. That's why we always look so unhappy. (laughs) I saw something on Reddit the other day, uh, questions uh, British people should answer immediately was the heading, and it said, why do we always look intrinsically evil? (laughs) I suppose we do, because we don't smile when we talk. Um, We're always very serious looking, although that's changing a lot, of course. But anyway, um, we always sound 
a little bit cold when we speak, and that's purely because of our mouth movements. You probably hear that uh, I sound warmer if I speak like this, because I'm smiling now, and you can probably hear the difference. But even with smiling, my top lip is stiff, and my bottom lip is uh, going down as I'm talking. I'm exaggerating a little bit, of course, just for the purposes of this podcast. Uh, So, shadowing your favorite speaker, not trying to understand what he or she says, but really trying to grasp their sounds. And if you're looking for a sound chart, if you just put into Google anti-moon sound chart, you'll get a very nice one. It's one that I often use in teaching. Um, it's Anti-Moon is a shadowing site. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, who would run a site on shadowing? Isn't that... Uh, <laughs> sound a little bit boring, doesn't it? You'd be amazed at uh, some of the things out there on the internet. Another one is uh, IELTS Liz. She She coaches people for the IELTS exam. And uh, she's a lovely woman, but she's clearly completely mad. I mean, who would make a site for IELTS students at 24-7? I think if you focus in on something like that, something so obscure for a long period of time, you do go a little bit insane. (laughs) Of course, I'm perfectly normal spending nine hours a day on Skype, you know. Anyway, uh, back to my point. So uh, you have to be shadowing. Sounds a bit superficial to actually copy someone, but it is how your voice changes. Um, So shadowing is uh, one of the major ways. So we, my first point there was to identify people that you like. The second point was shadow with them and also make sure that your mouth is coming down pulling your mouth down rather than side to side. That's very important. Uh, I think the the third thing to remember um, when you're trying to reduce your accents is about joining the words together to make them phrases, you know. Um, I was talking to someone the other day and... uh, uh, she basically said, you are Joseph, you are the English teacher. Honestly, it was like being shot by a machine gun. All these bullets, ba 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 I thought, oh no, no, I need to talk to her about her. <laughs> joining the words up. So, joining the words together happens by stretching them a bit. When you stretch a word, it's easier to join it to the next one. Uh, And that also means looking at your breathing. So you take a big deep breath first. And as you breathe out, you push the words out together. When I say breathing, the problem today is that people often breathe in, as I've told you before, but they don't breathe out. They just breathe in. Hello, my name is Joseph, an English teacher. It's like they're stressed, and that's very bad for their body, of course, and also very bad for your health, generally. So just take a moment to analyze how you breathe. Take a big deep breath in and push it out, and as you push it out, make sure you're filling it with sound. The third thing, and again, it sounds very superficial, is to copy people's accents. That's really, really important, of course. Um, But when you're doing that, um, the intonation that they're using is very, very important. Making sure your voice is going up and down. That's really very important. Um, And lastly, don't be afraid to be confident. I mean, if you go into a coffee shop in the UK, you ask for a coffee with milk, and the woman says, sorry, what do you want? It's enough to destroy you. I mean, I know when I was living in Spain, 
if people didn't understand what I was saying, I was ready to go and jump off the nearest bridge, you know. But it doesn't have to be like that. Uh, people live in their own worlds, and whenever we talk to anyone in the English-speaking world or not, we only ever get half their attention because they are in a different world of what happened on TV last night, what their boyfriend or girlfriend is currently doing, if their children is safe, and if they remember to feed the cats. So, you see, these, these kind of things are... Um, taking up people's time, and then we have our devices and social media and everything else. So when someone isn't listening to you, it's not because of your English. Well, usually not because of your English. It's because people aren't patient. You go to a city like London, and people are in a hurry. They're rushing. They don't have time to be worrying about your English. It's just like, what? What do you want? Of course, they're very polite, but... Uh, their pace moves faster than ours. So you don't need to be worrying so much. The English-speaking world, well, the UK anyway, is very, very diverse, and people are accustomed to hearing different accents. And if they aren't, that's not your problem. So rather than working to try to change your accents... Um, a much better thing to be doing is trying to connect with people, giving them space to talk to you as well. Because I don't know what it's like in your country, but here people just don't seem to have time to communicate effectively with each other, which in many ways is breaking down our culture. Well, these are just, uh, these are just a few tips for you. I hope you've enjoyed this. Personally speaking, I um, love to hear people communicate. I have all the patience in the world for people who are trying to make an effort with improving their communication skills. I don't know why English teachers tend to avoid accent work. I think it's just because to teach from a book about grammar uh, is relatively easier. In the old days in the UK, Accent work wasn't the job of an English teacher, it was the job of an elocutionist. They were people who helped those from lower classes talk like a middle class person, or those who were middle class to talk like an upper class person. Oh, they were hilarious. There were a few of them around when I was a child, and I mentioned earlier about... Uh, people who were a little bit uh, strange <laughs> or obsessed with certain parts of teaching English. Oh, elocutionists were very odd. They were always little old ladies who had a piano and glasses and a tuning fork, you know, who used music to teach you how you really should speak, you know, the Queen's English. And it was very necessary. I mean, if you wanted to work on radio, you had to have the Queen's accents. So you would seek out an elocutionist to help you get rid of your original accents. It was like a whole generation of people. And of course, those little old ladies never married. No, no, that wouldn't be, wouldn't be right to marry. No, 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 no. Their whole life was dedicated to elocution. Just strange. Um, then, of course, American voice coaches came in and that... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the class system had disappeared in the UK anyway. So uh, that left... Um, uh, well, that didn't leave uh, a hole. American voice coaches kind of took over. But voice coaching isn't really something British. We are a little bit uncomfortable with teaching people about how they speak. I mean, I love it, but it's much more an American thing. You know, if you go to YouTube, you see lots of American women wearing sports costumes teaching you how to speak American English. It's a little bit odd, isn't it? Well, anyway, that's it for me. I hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, let's talk again soon. See you. Bye.